Hi there, I'm John Iverson. Welcome to the podcast. This week I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the Honourable John Baird, a former parliamentary shit disturber turned respectable business person. Um, John is a senior advisor at Bennett Jones after a long career in politics at Queen's Park in Ontario and in Ottawa where he held four cabinet portfolios including Minister of Foreign Affairs 2011 to 2015. Recently John was co-chair of Pierre Poilievre's Conservative Leadership Campaign. John, welcome. Great to be with you. So clearly I was being slightly facetious, uh, but you were once described as as Stephen Harper's uh, Commons pit bull. Um, Yeah, by the time you left, you know, still four years shy of turning 50, you were regarded as something of uh, an elder statesman almost. I was a diplomat. I was was never a pit bull. I was always a pussycat. Well, well, I was going to ask you that. I mean, was there a maturation process? And I didn't have four cabinet jobs. I didn't have four cabinet jobs uh, in Ottawa. I had uh, six. Six. So you were you were transport, you were environment, you were treasury, you were foreign affairs, environment twice, house leader. And what? Oh, house leader. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, was was that a maturation process, or is it such theatre that you just essentially perform? the task that you're asked to do? Well, I think, I think the House of Commons is all about uh, theatre nowadays. I think when television was uh, uh, brought in in the late uh, 70s, it really changed the place. And uh, you have to, uh, in order to get any attention in a, in a 10 million, 100 million, billion channel world, you have to be a bit uh, colourful from time to time. And uh, certainly, uh, and you know, you, you, if, if you uh, stand up and ask me a question to, and bite my head off, I'm going to respond in kind, I think. You know, at the same time, though, you, while you were... Um combative in the House of Commons, uh, behind the scenes you were more collaborative. I mean, I'm thinking of the, um, the deal you did with Pat Martin to get the Accountability Act through in 2006. You know, you essentially accepted NDP amendments and he, he helped it through committee, right? Yeah, I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of cross-party uh, work that gets done and often isn't seen. Certainly, uh, I like people and I, worked, I think I worked uh, fairly well with most of my colleagues uh, on the other side. Uh, but Pat Martin uh, and Pierre Polyev and I uh, worked together to get the Federal Accountability Act through, and uh, we made like 21 amendments to the bill to get the NDP support. I can't even remember what the amendments were, uh, you know, uh, you know, 15 years later. So uh, you can you can uh, get things done. I mean, being a minority parliament, you, you have to work across the aisle if you want to get things uh, if you want to get things done. So, so you mentioned the fact that Pierre was involved in that. I mean, he, he has a similarly similarly pugilistic reputation. Do you think that he's got the uh, ability to? To work with other people, to maybe tone down some of the more polarizing things that he's he said. I don't know about tone down. I think he certainly has the capacity uh, to uh, to lead and to accomplish uh, accomplish things uh, in our system of government. Particularly when you've got a minority parliament, you have to work uh, across the aisle. Uh, I think Pierre has demonstrated that he can do that. He certainly did it with Pat Martin, and uh, you couldn't find uh, you couldn't find uh, you know people more divided uh, intellectually and ideologically than Pat Martin and Pierre, but they were able to work well together to get things uh, to get things done. And that's when he was you know a young man when he was 26 years old. Uh, he's I think uh, in uh, through seven terms in Parliament, he's certainly uh, uh, grown in the job quite a bit. Yeah, in the first couple of weeks he's been leader, you know, it, it looked certainly to me that he tried to undermine. Alain Reyes, one of his own MPs who had opposed him, he seems to have declared all-out war on the media. At the same time, he's reached across to um, to talk to people like Jean Charest, he's talked to Erin O'Toole, he's talked to Peter McKay. Brian Mulroney. He had dinner apparently with Brian Mulroney on Monday night. I mean, you know, Churchill talked about in in victory magnanimity. Are we going to see a a magnanimous Mm -hmm. Pierre Poilievre, or is it uh, a more spiky, vindictive style. I don't want. I don't want to, uh, about those two things. But I think certainly, if you look at his speech that he gave the night that he was uh, elected, uh, I think he uh, said all the right things. Uh, he's had some great, uh, uh, some great uh, uh, discussions with uh, people who didn't support him for leader, and he's certainly welcoming all the charade people uh, into the tent. Uh, and uh, the he'll, the party will be bigger and stronger uh, as a result of it. As far as that, that that's maybe as far as the the caucus and and uh, high profile supporters, but. Uh, people who are unaligned, I think, are nervous about some of the things he said. Cryptocurrency, support for the truckers' convoy, bashing institutions like the Bank of Canada, giving credence to conspiracy theories uh, around the, the World Economic Forum. Oh, no, 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 whoa, whoa. I'm going I'm I'm to push back. Uh, I didn't give credence to the conspiracy theories on the World Economic Forum. Uh, one of the other candidates in the leadership race were phone banking 
and we're, uh, and we're uh, uh, sending emails to all the party membership saying that uh, uh, I was controlling Pierre and that I'm how somehow involved with the World Economic Forum now, uh, which is not true. So, uh, you know, we could have stopped the whole leadership campaign and uh, spent six months defending the World Economic Forum, uh, or we could focus on uh, winning, uh, winning the leadership and, uh, and helping make him be prime minister. No, but, he, but he did say he would stop any member of his government from going to the World Economic Forum, an event you went to. I mean, is it, it, yeah, is it a conspiracy to, uh, we have to, to undermine put, prosperity and sovereignty? Pierre is not uh, pushing any conspiracy theories in that regard. I think he had, to t he had an issue uh, that was thrown into his, onto his lap and he had to deal with it, and he was very effective at dealing with it. And you know what? He's going to have to do this uh, that uh, every day uh, between now and the next election because uh, the media and the uh, Liberals and the NDP will be throwing a lot at him. And uh, he was tested during the leadership about whether he could, uh, uh, whether he could uh, deal with those type of challenges. And I think he did it very, very effectively. And, and, uh, and two, people won't be able, two people won't be able to go to a conference in Switzerland. That's, uh, that's uh, hardly the end of the world. Right, right. But I mean, uh, well, let's, let's move on to the, to, to the media component of that. Um, it does seem that, you know, that he's clearly fundraising off the back of attacking the parliamentary mm. press gallery. Is that, a, is that a, 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 a legitimate and practical long-term strategy? Well, I think, I think if you look at uh, one member of the parliamentary press gallery attacked him uh, so ferociously he had to apologize like when his employers uh, made him. Uh, and then you have another uh, member of the parliamentary press gallery uh, just today uh, saying, you know, encouraging people uh, and suggesting people shoot uh, conservative MPs. So, you know, he's going to push back. When well, he, I, I, I think he used the figure of speech, which you, if you if you were oh, come on, so God, delicate God, in your sensibilities, you could. Had, if a conservative had said that, uh, the parliamentary press guy would have jumped all over it. You Do you think it's a long term legitimate uh, strategy to, to I mean, the media at, at, the, at the core is holding him accountable as it holds the prime minister accountable. Is it fair to say you're not going to answer questions? No, I, I think I think he'll answer questions. Uh, but when uh, when people ferociously bark at him, he'll uh, he'll push back. I did. Uh, that's uh, that's the nature of the game. I think that there's no doubt that the, the, the mainstream media, uh, the legacy media, uh, has changed quite a bit. Um, uh, you know, in in English Canada, outside of Quebec, <clears throat> they don't have the same power and influence that they uh, that they once have. There's so much more fewer uh, journalists, and uh, so many Canadians get their news and information from a, a whole different uh, source. It is a rather remarkable thing that Pierre, you know, won all ten provinces and three territories uh, on the first ballot and didn't do a single uh, television interview with CBC, CTV, or uh, Global Television. Uh, it shows you, the, uh, it shows you that the, the, the landscape is changing and changing considerably. Uh, I uh, noticed- But that's a very, de media, just, just to go, to pick up on that though, just to pick up on that though, because cause clearly a leadership campaign is very different from a, a general election, as you well know. I mean, these are engaged people by definition because they're party members. Do you think that that could work in a general election? No, I think I think he did do a lot of uh, a lot of mainstream media, legacy media in Quebec, and I think he performed quite well. And uh, my advice to him would be to do uh, to more in English Canada because he's uh, an effective effective spokesman uh, for his uh, vision for the country and for the party. So uh, I would certainly right. encourage him that going forward to uh, to engage. Uh, I think when I was a minister, I was uh, pretty open and pretty engaged with uh, with uh, the media, and I think that uh, served me well. Uh, but uh, that's he is going to push back as he should when uh, when people cross no, the line. But that's fair enough. But, that, but he is an effective communicator. I mean, if anybody mm. needs to be shielded from the media, it's not Pierre Poiliev. Yeah, I think uh, I think I would encourage him to do more because when he does it, it's very effective. I agree. Looking more broadly, I mean, I'm not you know given your partisan leanings, I'm not expecting Socratic ob objectivity. But how do you view the political landscape at the moment? I mean, you you have been part of governments and you, uh, that have. Stay overstay their welcome, become too long in the tooth, and and you kind of knew going into the election in two thousand and three that uh, the Ernie Eves government was done for. I think it was pretty obvious that the Harper government was done for twenty fifteen. Are we there yet? I think you know Brian Mulroney once told me this. He said, "Why did I win?" Uh, he said, uh, "People were tired of Trudeau," and he said, "Why did Kretschmer win?" People were tired of me. I think that'll probably represent about fifty percent of the equation. Uh, if you talk to anyone of any party who went door to door in the recent Ontario election, uh, I think uh, people are looking for change in uh, in Ottawa. Uh, this government is uh, is past its best uh, before date. 
uh, and uh, I think uh, I think people are going to be eager for change. Uh, Pierre's challenges will be to uh, to reach out to Canadians, present a compelling vision of an alternative, and to uh, and to earn their support, uh, which he and his team are going to be doing uh, over the next uh, two or three years. There's no doubt that, that Justin Trudeau has ne- needled a lot of voters with the polarizing rhetoric and hammering away on the, the wedge of uh, identity politics. But I, I remember Jerry Butt saying to me that uh, he was always amazed that people wanted Justin to do well, in his words. Um, he said that uh, Trudeau didn't have to be perfect, he just had to be better than the other guy. Do you think Trudeau remains the Liberal Party's best hope for a revival? Um, I suspect so. Uh, I think he's going to run again. Uh, I mean, he uh, once said to his wife, and I think this defines him, he says, I fight and I win. Uh, and that's, uh, I think uh, he's had three come from behind uh, victories uh, to, uh, to get elected in each term. And I think he'll believe he can do it uh, again. And I think he will run. And uh, I think that will give Canadians a real choice uh, between the more of the same or a different vision. What about the NDP? I mean, do you think they've made themselves an irrelevant adjunct of the of the Liberal Party? Um, or do you think that they could actually claim credit for and win votes on the back of things like the dental plan, which is, well, I guess, what they're telling you? I like Jagan Singh. I think he's a good guy. I don't think he's been an effective uh, leader of his party. Uh, the deal that they made with the, uh, with the Liberals was uh, unnecessary uh, and unwise. Uh, he'll get little credit. Uh, you look at uh, David Peterson made an accord with the uh, NDP in, uh, in Ontario and uh, you know, Peterson cleaned, uh, cleaned the clock with him at the next uh, election. So I, I think it, uh, it's, it's not a good strategy. And I think the, if you notice the attacks that uh, the NDP are making on Pierre, they see he's beginning to eat their lunch among working class voters. Uh, there's going right. to be a lot of parts of this country where there's going to be competitive races. I'll predict right now that uh, Pierre and the Conservatives will win a riding like Timmins, James Bay, and will pick up seats on Vancouver Island uh, when people, uh, they weren't even competitive in previous uh, elections. So it'll be, uh, it'll be exciting to watch the new, uh, the new dynamic. Well, I was going to ask you, because your party won a majority with a coalition of, of the West and, and some many multicultural suburbs around the big cities. Uh, this looks like a different kind of coalition. I mean, there do seem to be um, unsettled progressives, younger people coming over to the Conservatives. And we saw with Doug Ford, uh, a lot of the traditional blue-collar vote is not particularly happy with the NDP. So so do you, do you see a different kind of co- Conservative coalition? Okay. Absolutely. Um, I think we can uh, we can harvest a lot of seats in uh, Quebec and uh, the Maritimes in northern Ontario, Vancouver Island. Um, but also, I mean, there's, there's no doubt that uh, the election will be in a big way about the uh, 905 belt around uh, Toronto. Uh, and uh, that'll be uh, that'll be with the, the, the big enchilada, so to speak. Um, and I think, uh, you know, having experienced people in his leadership team like uh, Melissa Lansman uh, or Tim Upple uh, will uh, will help him uh, will help him lead that campaign. Have you seen signs of progress in Brampton, Mississauga, Etobicoke, places like that? Well, I know during the leadership campaign, uh, he had a huge number of rallies and events in the GTA. Uh, they were uh, well attended and they were uh, pretty diverse, uh, whether it was Persian Canadians in, uh, in uh, Don Valley East, whether it was uh, Indo-Canadians in uh, Brampton, uh, Chinese Canadians in Markham. Uh, he had a lot of, uh, a lot of diverse uh, support and a lot of young people everywhere. And uh, so this will be a, a different, uh, a different dynamic than we've seen in previous elections. Uh, Pierre is able to is an, is an excellent communicator, and he's also leading. He's not just simply doing the polls or putting his finger in the air to try to find out which way the winds are blowing. He's actually leading, uh, and uh, that's something I think Canadians are desperate, uh, desperate for is is leadership. And I think the next election is going to be about competence. I mean, this government can't even deliver passports or run our airports properly, uh, and uh, they need uh, they need a new team. What about you? Are you desperate to uh, ever get back in the race or do you miss it? <laughs> you know, you miss the, uh, the team sport, you miss the people, uh, you miss the action. But uh, I uh, left government uh, seven and a half years ago and I'm pretty happy in the private sector. But you're, I mean, you're 53 and you're, uh, I mean, would you never run again, do you think? Uh, it's not part of my plan, that's for sure. Uh, I did 10 years federal, 10 years provincial. Uh, I had a total of 10 different cabinet jobs federal and provincially. So uh, I had a great run and uh, I, uh, I declared victory. Good for you. Well, look, have fun in the private sector. We'll see you on the hustings. Great to be with you.